You're boring. Wow. It's not supposed to be me. It's supposed to be about you. I understand that, but I feel like you're boring when it comes to sex. What's going on, people? We are back again with another moving mad video, and this one right here is all about Molly and Kelly. Now, of course, they were told to have conversations, serious conversations by the therapist. And as you can see right then and there, they begin. But Kelly's like, Molly, you start. And then boom, she's like, you're boring. God damn, that stung to watch, that stung to just listen to. And then to say that I just don't like the sex. I mean, honestly, talk about brutality at its brutality moment. I mean, listen. At the end of the day, one thing that we do know for sure, for sure, is that uh, Molly does not shy from being straightforward when it comes to expressing how she feels towards Kelly. Now, of course, when it comes to Kelly, though, this season, each time he asks Molly to open up, Molly would then open up with something. But whatever she opens up with, he never likes it. And he's always like, hmm, she's attacking me. Hmm, she's lying. Hmm, that ain't the truth because this is what happened. She's doing this just to be spiteful, but I always ask Molly what is her likes and dislikes when it came to being sexual, foreplay, everything. I've always communicated with her. I just don't know what is going on here. I feel like Kelly is just batshit scared of Molly. What has she done to this man? Because you see, each time they have a scene, people keep saying that, yeah, maybe he's not speaking up because of, you know, confidentiality or all that kind of stuff, or he's being careful because of what's going on. But one thing that I've noticed for sure, for sure, is that each time, well, one of the many things that I've noticed is that each time Molly says something, Kelly won't ever respond to her, but he'll happily tell us briefly in the cutscene. And I'm thinking to myself, why can't you say what you're telling us in the cutscene to her? Like, make that make sense to me. Why are you so afraid to just be vocal, honest, open with Molly? Well, let me not even say why you're afraid to be so vocal and honest, but why are you just afraid to speak your truth to her? But yet you can tell us certain things here and there. Why? Listen, I don't know what this woman has done to him, but goddamn, whatever she's done to him, man, it ain't looking good. Boy, this woman must really be the devil in some kind of way, you know what I mean? Because honestly... It just doesn't make sense to me, but we continue. You do not want to talk about past relationships. You don't want to talk about things that upset you. You don't want to talk about your trauma with your career. And until you have closure from that, there's no way we can move forward. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, yeah. just give me a second. Yeah. <sighs> I generally feel like there's a level of truth to what she's saying here. I mean, listen, look at it this way, right? If you are someone that is afraid to talk about certain things in your life, or maybe just don't want to talk about certain things from you in your life. It's either one, because you, you know, you're afraid to open up that box or two, you put it behind you. Right. But generally speaking, I will say this, and I'm not saying that this is correct in any, in any kind of capacity, but there are definitely some women out there that definitely want to know about, you know, your life. You know, they want to know about the ins and outs of X, Y, Z, because they want to be able to connect with you even more so they can understand you more. Now, I don't know if Molly's that kind of woman because she could easily be the kind of woman that where you can tell us other things about you, but then she could easily use it against you because that is a very common thing by a lot of women in this world that they will use a man's vulnerability against him. And I generally do believe that there are certain things that maybe just maybe he has spoke about briefly, and maybe she has thrown it in his face every now and then. And that's why he's so afraid to speak up. I don't know. It's very hard to know because not much is being saying. The dialogue from Kelly is pretty much quiet uh, blank right now. But either way, though, um, if we are in a situation where he's got things in his past and those things are the things that make him react the way he reacts, behave the way he behaves because of trouble and X, Y, Z. All right, cool. I get it. I respect it. But before you get in a relationship, you need to be in a position where you've dealt with some of those things in a way where not necessarily you moved on for them or you're over them, but in a way where you at least have some kind of mechanism so that they don't affect your life with other people. Because of course, when you've been in the, in the police force, the things that you see, they stay with you forever. Do you know what I mean? But if you can try and get mechanisms from a therapist or something like that, hopefully that helps you, you know, moving forward with the person that you connect with X, Y, Z, you know what I'm saying? But either way though, I wouldn't be surprised if he has said little things here and there in the past and then boom, I don't know where Molly's used it against him because she gives me that vibe. If you dig what I'm saying. He keeps attacking me and I'm like, God damn bro. I, I can't take that. Molly never respected my job. Molly was never understanding of what I was dealing with. I dealt with a lot of high pressure cases and, but she's using my career as a scapegoat instead of taking accountability for her actions. Ah, oh, this is my point. What actions? 
please let us in what actions okay because i don't disagree with him there's a good chance you know a high chance a possible chance that yes molly is using his career as a scapegoat for xyz because to be honest with you, she has referred to his career more than once now. Maybe it's about three or four times now. You know what I mean? And it's kind of annoying because she cannot keep sitting on that. If you really have a therapy, you, also, you have to also speak about other things away from his career. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, his career is done now. It is behind him now. What matters is who he is now, who he wants to be now, and also how he can, you know, do certain things based on who he is now to maybe help improve your relationship. But at the end of the day, keep talking about his job, this and that, bloody daddy, daddy, da, it's getting boring now, okay? End of the day, if there's anything that he wants to say about it, he will say it at any give, at, at the right time when he feels comfortable. Now, of course, that the, that right time may not be a time when you two, two together. It could be a time when, I guess, you've separated because you couldn't handle it, which obviously has happened in a relationship, right? But it is what it is. Sometimes people open up with certain people and sometimes they don't. It's just the way you make people feel. And clearly, she hasn't made him feel in a way where he can really be that open or where he can really want to voice certain things because of whatever she has done in the past, said in the past, however she's behaved in the past. But again, it still irritates me and irritates me that we are in a position where we are witnessing these two on a couple's retreat type TV show. Yes, of course, there's a good chance they're on it for the money. But at the same time, though, it's clear that them being here has been absolutely pointless because Molly has already got in the head about what she wants, but also the same time, well, about what she wants, but, but, but believes Kelly cannot cannot deliver it. But at the same time, Kelly's already got in his head that, uh, well, no matter what he says and does, no matter how hard he tries, Molly's always going to have some sort of obstacle thrown in front of him. And these things obviously stem from something that has happened in their relationship, which obviously clearly says that their relationship is completely dead. There's nothing about it even alive. Now, of course, we know that they have now officially broke up anyway. But I think their relationship probably broke up. It, it probably ended way before it ended, if you know what I mean. Because really and truly, um, I don't know why these two even stuck around because she completely destroys their sex life. Talks about how it really just wasn't anything. Meanwhile, he's like, nah, it wasn't that bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've never seen, I mean, I have seen, but the way these two are on so many different pages, it is crazy. But I really, really, really want to know, how did Molly switch up after Kelly moved from NYC to where she's at? Okay, I want to know how she switched up. But also, I want to know, in true form format, how Kelly switched up, you know, um, in Molly's eyes. Do you see what I'm saying? But in his eyes, she switched up. In her eyes, he switched up. But also at the same time, in her eyes, she's telling the truth when she talks about everything that she's telling us. But then in Kelly's eyes, she's like, no, she ain't telling everything, man. But then he's not telling us anything. Anything. It's annoying. It's hella annoying. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully, if we do have a tell, or which we should have a tell for this, Hopefully we will get some answers, you know, because uh, it's only right that we get answers because this is becoming absolutely ridiculous. You couldn't tell me otherwise. But hey, man, you guys let me know what you're thinking down below in the comment section and we can most certainly talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, peace. Oh.